DJ Ferris. Chicago, nigga. It's the real one. He back. Only one is pulling shit. Fuck up. Let's get a sports talk. Because of the rookie salary cap, this didn't used to be the case, but because of the rookie salary cap, teams can make a decision to move on pretty quickly from these quarterbacks as opposed to if you feel you've made a mistake, you have sort of are, are saddled with that for five years as you chase that player. So with that thought in mind, Nick, why do you think of the idea of teams moving on quickly from young quarterbacks? I mean, I love it. I think that when you are se selecting a leader, which is what the quarterback is, a leader of your team, you, you don't need four years to know that someone is bad at their job. You can figure that out pretty quickly, and you can, the sooner you move on, the better. I feel like give them about three years. Their third year, that's when they should be able to take the next step to show you that – this is the leader. This is the guy for us. This is our precious guy going forward. I see him made a major improvement. If you haven't made that major improvement in that third year, now I can see you cut ties with him. Because the first two years, he's still trying to get the groove of the game. See how fast the game is really is. It's still kind of moving fast for him. By his third year, he should be able to Read the defense better. Fix his mistakes that he made before to become a better quarterback. If he haven't fixed the mistakes he made his first two years, then you go ahead. Move on. Better off you will be. I think I was a little bit put off by the Cardinals moving on from their first round pick of Josh Rosen with and to go with Kyler Murray because in my mind I was thinking, man, do you really know what that guy is? But if you have him in practice every day and you have him playing in NFL games, you should be able to determine whether he's your guy or not. And you should not let the fact that you made a decision last year um, inhibit you from making a better decision this year going forward to build your team. So while I don't like it for the player necessarily, I like it as a decision. You don't want to go after this sunk cost fallacy chasing after something, chasing after a bad decision that you already made. I get that part of it. There is another side to it, though, D. Wood, and that is I'm old enough to remember a time when developing a quarterback took longer than one year that you couldn't decide. Maybe, yes, maybe there are unique circumstances where you can watch a guy for one year in practice and say, okay, he's never going to be the guy. And, and then you've made just a horrendous mistake in the draft. But how about the idea, D. Wood, that one year is not enough time to evaluate a quarterback in the NFL today or at any point? Sure, Granny, I can buy I can buy some stock into that. But hey, listen, with all the other players on this right now uh, on this panel, the one thing we know is you can't fool the players. And you know, Dominique brought the point about practice and all the things behind the scenes. That's the things that we don't that we don't really. See. You ain't gonna really see that. Only coaches and teammates can see how that quarterback is playing in practice, how he's approaching every practice. If he not approving there, you don't want to put him on the field because he not showing you enough on the practice field that he's ready to go on the field and lead you. That's what have to do with certain guys that get evaluated to the active roster and some that's left off the roster because how they practice. That's what coaches go off of. If they use for a lot of improvement in practice, okay, now we could go in here and get ready and put you there as the next guy up to lead this franchise. But if you're not proven there, you're not going to be able to prove on that field. Come game time. Hey, but the coaches and everyone who evaluates these players, they see day in and day out. You, one of the biggest qual you know, qualities that you have to have at the quarterback position is being a leader of men. So if you got a guy and you see in practice that guys aren't responding to on game day, guys just not rallying around, that you can get that, you can get that indication really quick. So I actually applaud the Arizona Cardinals saying, you know what, with Josh Rosen, no, nah, that's not working. Let's go with Kyler Murray 
and uh, and look what's happening with the Arizona Cardinals right now. Yeah, that makes sense. David Pollock, I wanted to ask you a slightly different question because much of this conversation is based around Trevor Lawrence. People are talking about him like he's a generational talent, and so any team that might be in a position to draft him, you might say, well, that's an obvious one. But Justin Fields feels like he's coming on strong to me. Is that another quarterback who should be talked about in the same conversation? Yes. And I know Trevor, according to a lot of people, has separated himself and one of the best prospects they've seen in a while. If you're not watching Justin Fields through a couple games this season, you're missing out. It's a daggum treat, man. He is on fire. And they are aggressive. And... And, and, and the ball's coming out quick, and the ball's coming out accurately. The ball's spread all over the football field. And by the way, in the new NFL, when, when you're seeing more quarterback runs and more quarterbacks being successful because they can buy time. And, and that's, what they, that's what they're looking for at the next level. Can you buy time? Is you mobile? We do read options with you? That's what they're looking for. They want to see how you is on the college level, your accuracy, how you read the defense, and this mobile and all. If you can do all that, you can do that at the next level. It just depends on what system these quarterbacks get in. Cause they have to fit, they had to fix uh, fix that system. If they don't fit it, they out of place and they not just gonna fit right in. But he's mobile enough. Fields is mobile enough to do all of those things. And he's a good, accurate thrower. If you're watching, because Trevor Lawrence, he's a good quarterback too. Good pocket passer. He can run the ball a little bit. He got to let it a little bit. You know, I just feel like Fields more mobile than him. And make decisions. Dude, he can do that as well. So I, I do think that Justin Fields is coming on strong. And listen, I know Trevor didn't play last week. It has nothing to do with Trevor not playing. It has everything to do with Justin Fields, his accuracy, his decision making, his build, his thickness, his ability to run. I still think when I'm comparing him, he's a he's a more athletic Dak Prescott. So if I'm, I'm if I'm looking for a guy like that to build my future around, I think he that's pretty daggum solid. No question. That's three daggums, by the way, but one very quick follow-up. I, I, I want to make sure I'm understanding what you're saying. Are you telling me that if you were making the pick, you would consider taking Fields ahead of Lawrence as right now? Yeah, I would start considering that now. From what I'm seeing so far, and again, we're only two games in for Ohio State, but he's definitely on track to me to, to just making this decision a lot more difficult than we thought it would be before the season. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming.